Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, I'm going to talk today a little bit about barrel volume, and this is a redo video because the first video that I did, uh, I gave out some wrong information, some people corrected me, so I'm going to go back and just redo in that video, and for all of you people wondering, where'd that video go? That's where it went. It it went to hell. I, I deleted it off the face of the earth because I don't want to be giving you guys wrong information because that's not the point of this channel. The point of this channel is to give you guys the most correct information that I can find, or at least that I can... Um, deduce from my own findings or other people's findings and from what I was told in the last video I was saying some wrong things so uh, we're gonna talk today about barrel voluming and cylinders and all that good stuff so first off let's start with the cylinders so a lot of people always ask me um, what does this little port mean or what happens when I have no port if I want more FPS do I need no port or you know how much what kind of barrel should I get for this cylinder what kind of cylinder should I get for this barrel so the use for this uh, port right here is to bleed off air, and when air is bled off from this little port right here, as the piston moves forward, um, it reduces the effective cylinder volume. So then everything up until this point is just shot off the side, and then from here on in, only this amount of air actually um, is used for propelling the BB and whatnot. So. Um, this amount is your effective cylinder volume right here, and a lot of people will ask me, well, so then what does this mean? So I should I just use, you know, no, no port cylinders all the time, or should what? Why are, why do people even make these? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because um, when choosing a correct barrel to cylinder setup, you want to get. Um, I was calling it a matched, a volume match setup, but that's kind of incorrect because. The volume, the air volume in the cylinder is not perfectly equal to the air volume in the barrel like I had originally thought. Um, it is a ratio that sort of fluctuates depending on how much power um, and how long of a cylinder and how full of a stroke you have on the piston and whatnot. And to help you with some of these calculations and figuring out um, what your optimized barrel length should be for you know, what kind of cylinder you have, um, I'm going to leave a link to the Hunter Seeker Armory 5 uh, uh, calculator, airsoft calculator below. It's an Excel spreadsheet. You can email him for it. Um, and what it does is you input um, some values into the one side, and it'll tell you, based on some rough calculations, um, where what kind of barrel length or what kind of cylinder you should be getting for each individual setup. But basically, um, what I can deduce from the you know sort of stock um, configurations that it has on there right now, the the barrel the vo barrel to or sorry, the cylinder to barrel volume ratio on the Type O cylinder, so the cylinder without any ports in it, is about 1.8. It's like 1.7 something, 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 something. It's about 1.8 to 1. So um, a Type O cylinder on the, on the correct length, the optimized barrel length, is going to be 455 millimeters, and that, bar that air volume ratio is going to be 1.8 to 1. And what that does is that it helps... Um, as the BB's exiting to not get what you would call under volume or over volume. Um, under voluming happens when, say, I have a, an unoptimized setup. So I have this port in the side of it and I have, say, just some ridiculously long 650 millimeter barrel. Um, the air volume in here is not at the proper ratio to push the BB um, out the front of the barrel with the correct amount of you know air volume behind it so you get a lower FPS than you would usually be expecting and you can see things like inaccuracy um, drop in FPS among other weird things that sort of go on when you're not running a match setup sorry not a match I should say optimized setup so where was I going with that so then the on the other end of the spectrum you can have something called an over volume setup so what that means is that say I have a type O cylinder so a cylinder with no ports on it whatsoever and I have just some ridiculously short barrel. I have something like a, like a, say, 100 millimeter barrel. So something just stubby, about this long. And what happens is that the amount of air in here is way more than the amount of, uh, the air volume ratio in here is way more than what I need for that barrel. So you can notice a weird drop in, a in FPS, sometimes in accuracy, because there's, you know, it's not optimized. So, but what's cool about having an overvolume setup is that the um, you can do weird things with what, something called something that's called jewel creep. And jewel creep is neat because, um, say that I have that short, you know, hundred millimeter barrel, and I have a typo cylinder on it. Um, the 0.2 gram BB will exit 
the, the barrel faster and not totally absorb all the kinetic energy of that full cylinder volume right here. So um, if I say start stepping up the uh, BB weights um, to say, you know, two fives, three O's, 0.43s, you notice that the power of the, of the shot, you, because a lot of people assume that the heavier the BB, um, the, what do you call it, the, the slower it's going to go just because it's heavier. But with jewel creep, um, it doesn't decrease as quickly, or sometimes you can see weird stuff where it stays almost the same. You see that a lot with gas guns, um, where certain BB weights are chronoing it hotter than they should be. Um, and that's what's cool about BB weights, is almost being able to change your your power levels on the fly if you were to swap magazines with them. But um, with that, I should also recommend that be smart about it because that's a good way to get people hurt um, if you're running uh, a joule power, so a, a kinetic energy power that's higher than what should be allowed at that field. Um, that's what happened. That's what causes um, things like people getting their their eyewear or their you know glass stuff or eyewear shot out. Um, it's happened before, I know, at certain events. So, and that's a reason why the polar stars are being regulated really heavily because it's really easy to overvolume your setups um, to a level higher than what you would usually be able to do easily on an AEG. So, what does that mean to make an optimized setup? Well, um, that's where the calculator should come in handy for you guys a lot because I can't off the top of my head tell you the exact um, port length for each gun, but um, a lot of companies will already have, you know, like Garter I know for sure has um, a certain sort of cylinder set with their port in it that's matched to a certain kind of gun. So that can give you an idea for what the length is because I believe Garter is running off of um, Tokimurui uh, dim, uh, calculations and dimensions and stuff like that. And TM's um, calculations are pretty spot on as far as what they figured they needed for each sort of barrel length. Um, but if you use Hunter Seeker 5's calculator at the bottom, it'll be something where you don't need to you know browse through each of the pictures and figure out um, what what cylinder you need for each setup. Um, but yeah, so for but let's just say for a stock setup. So say I have a typo sort of cylinder and I wanted to know what the pro proper barrel length is for it. It's about 455 and that's sort of taking a little bit of liberty because it's like supposed to be 458. Um, but 455 is about your optimized setup. So another thing that I need to bring up is people that insist on having just the you know absolute longest barrel in their quote unquote DMR sniper rifle, um, SEAL Team 6, you know, scout sniper, you know, super operator setup. Um, you don't need to go with the most obnoxiously large barrel that you can get on the on to install in your gun. It's not gonna help your your FPS or performance, your accuracy you know, just inherently because it's longer, I get a lot of people that think that, you know, if I just extend this barrel to infinity, it'll, you know, by the time the barrel touches the target, it will be more accurate. Um, it, it doesn't quite work like that. Um, the, you want to run an optimized or match or, you know, an optimized setup with your cylinder and your current, you know, air volume setups. And that's what that calculator can help you out with right there. Um, Let's see what else was I going to talk about. Uh, oh yeah, bore ups kits. So then there's also another thing on the market called bore up kits, and that's where the cylinder um, and piston head and air nozzle and cylinder head are all bored out just a little bit wider. So you see how, and I mean I know it doesn't look like a whole lot, but the the walls on the cylinder are fairly thick. You can actually, you know, if you were to really nitpick, you could bore this out, and I believe the volume increases are about 8 to 15 percent something like that I, that's just a number off the top of my head I remember reading somewhere but basically what it does is that it gives you more air volume in the cylinder and what that will help you with is if you wanted you know if you absolutely needed to go with that longer um, you know longer than 509 500 509 millimeter barrel although at 500 and 509 millimeters is not quite optimized but if you you know some people just insist on going to that level or larger, then the the bore the bore up cylinder will help you with that. Another thing that I want to warn you guys against is don't buy the bore up cylinders with the port in the side of them. Those are the items that I'm not sure why they exist because um, you're bleeding off air until this point. Why are you bothering to bore to you know get a wider cylinder if you're just going to bleed off that much air volume, you know, and try and gain it back in nine percent, you know, that little tiny amount of like. Uh, um, circumference in the cylinder. It, it doesn't make sense to me. So the only bore-up kits that I think that people should be buying are the ones that are, you know, the typo cylinder with the, you know, bore-up dimensions on it.
Um, and those those can be really useful for people using DSG setups um, because your the DSG only pulls the piston back about you know what is it like s eight teeth I think eight eight teeth is what eight teeth is what the old generation was and then Riot's now making a nine tooth setup so um, if you are you know strapped for for air volume and you want to crank a little bit more FPS out of your gun um, bore up kits are actually a pretty good way to go as far as the um, as far as you know, a DSG setup, and as far as DSG, DSG, uh, what do you call it? DSG gear setups, and then finding the proper barrel uh, setup for that, because you know the piston's only getting pulled back part of the way. You can actually use the Hunter Seeker Five calculator in conjunction with measuring how far the piston comes back with the eight or nine tooth, depending on which version you have, eight or nine tooth DSG gear. You can, you know, set it up in your gun and then pull manually take the gear and pull the piston back until you see where it stops and then measure out how much effective um, air volume you have in that setup and then plug it into the calculator and it'll help you figure out what kind of barrel length you need but I believe the maximum length that you can go up to or at least what it used to be was 363 you couldn't go you can't go over in a DSG setup you can't go over 363 millimeters because at that point um, you start to under volume and another thing is because it's going so fast that you can actually have the piston suck back on it and then you'll have the the on full auto the piston will suck back as it as it's being fired and it'll actually create suction on the BB and you get these weird inconsistencies with FPS you can have BBs hitting each other on the way out just weird stuff happens so um, usually people with DSG guns don't tend to go that far they, they only tend to go to maybe like 300 millimeters in, at least in my experience you end up having those on like short CQB guns stubby guns stuff like that um, but 363 is the maximum that the manual I believe says that you can go up to without you know running into a bunch of weird problems with um, shot inconsistencies and stuff like that so um, I think that's it though I think I've covered everything and corrected everything that I need to say um, thank you for the people that corrected me thank you for the people that gave me um, the, the correct information to get that out there and if there's anything any other questions you guys have just send me a pm on facebook um youtube i'm gonna ask you guys to stop sending me pms on youtube because it's really hard for me to get to the inbox on youtube and sometimes those just sort of sit around for a while so if i don't respond to those it's because the new youtube layouts make it really hard for me to get to my inbox um Facebook is a lot quicker, a lot quicker way to get a hold of me. Um, that or my email, uh, valleyriverarms at gmail.com. Just shoot me an email and I'll try and get back to you as quick as I can. Um, other than that, just let me let me know if you guys got any questions and I will talk to you guys later.